Okay, hi everybody. So in this video here, we're gonna solve another equation. We're gonna solve x cubed minus six x squared plus three x plus 10 equals zero. And it's a cubic. So I'm kind of anticipating three, three solutions here. And what I wanna do is I wanna get this down so it's like three linear factors multiplied together equaling zero. Because I know as soon as I've got that factored, I know that I can find one solution by setting a equal to zero, another by setting b equal to zero, and another by setting c equal to zero. Okay, because I know those are going to be possibilities for making the whole expression equal to zero. So the question becomes, how do I factor that? I see four terms, and so what I want to do is I'd like to try grouping, but if I take out, for example, an x q, sorry, x squared out of this first one, oops, I end up with x minus six. There's really nothing I can factor out of that second uh, set of terms there, so uh, that doesn't work. And actually, just to kind of cut to the chase here, it turns out that no matter how I fiddle with it and how I group it, grouping's not going to work as a method of factoring. So I've got to try something else here. And so the next thing I try here is I'm going to use the remainder th uh, theorem and the factor theorem together here because I know that when I break this apart into linear factors, I'll do it like this, the linear factors, the these factors, the constants in all of those factors have to be factors of 10. So I'm looking at x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 2 x plus 5, x minus 5, x plus 10, and x minus 10. These are possible factors for this whole polynomial expression. Because remember, when I multiply all of the little linear factors out here, the constants in each one of them, when you multiply them all together, you're going to get that final constant there. That's just how that works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check each one of these. I'm going to start by checking this first one. Now, remember, in factored form, if, if x plus 1 is one of the factors there, then if I evaluate x as negative 1, it's going to make this factor equal to 0, which means if it's a factor of the polynomial, it should also make the whole polynomial equal to 0. Because if one of the factors, if one of the factors goes to 0, then it'll cause the, that, that product will cause everything to go to 0. So let's just check this. If you plug negative 1, it's going to be negative 1 uh, minus 6 because the negative 1 squared becomes positive 1, minus 3 plus 10, and it turns out that does, in fact, equal 0. So I know that x plus 1 must be a factor because when I plugged the, the negative 1 into that, it made the whole thing equal to 0. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some synthetic division. So I'm going to put my negative 1 outside here, 1, negative 6, 3, and 10. I'm going to bring down the 1. I'm going to multiply. And I'm going to add. And I'm adding here because uh, the factor that I have in here, remember, the factor that we found was that x plus 1. So I'm outside. I'm putting in the, the value that makes it the opposite sign there. I'm, I'm going to plug in the negative 1. And so when I do that, I can just add. So negative 6 and negative 1 is going to be negative 7. Multiply, I get 7. 3 plus 7 is 10 negative 10 when I multiply and I add and I get 0. And that's that's good. That confirms that that x plus 1 was a factor because my remainder went to 0. So now my polynomial looks like this. I know that x plus 1 is a factor. And after dividing it out, I know that I've got x squared minus 7x plus 10. Now, that is a quadratic that I'm hoping I should be able to factor relatively easily. And yeah, I can because my factors of 10 uh, that add to 7 are going to be 2 and 5. And because the, the product is positive but the sum is negative, I know that they're both negative. So there we go. I was able to factor it. And now I'm going to let that equal 0 because that's, that's, what the original, that's what the original function was equal to or the original polynomial is equal to. So I know, therefore, that either x plus 1 is equal to 0 x minus 2 is equal to 0, or x minus 5 is equal to 0, which means if x is negative 1, I know that the whole thing will go to 0. If x is positive 2, it'll go to 0, or if x is positive 5. And so those are my solutions. And I might write it out like this, negative 1, comma 2, comma 5. Whatever you at this point, don't put parentheses around that because that in, implies that it's a point that you've listed and then the values become an X, a Y, and a Z. I just want them to be all X's, all possible values for X.